In the first 20 years of my farming career, basically I made no money. Grew some great beef, got top prices at the yards, but all the input costs were eating up all the profits. Thinking down the regenerative farming route was how do I reduce our costs? How do we make it more sustainable long-term and more profitable? Hi John, we're here this morning at Rocking Chair Farm. Can you tell us a bit about the property and how long you've been here and what are you running? Rocking Chair Farm is uh, in Marshdale near Dungog. It's a property of 220 acres uh, or 91 hectares and we run Angus beef cattle and we also have Aussie white sheep and we do a very small pasture fed chickens. We're running uh, about 200 head of Angus. That includes uh, 100 breeders and replacement heifers and, and calves. The property I bought in 2007 about five years ago, I, I met my business partner, Alan. Him and I had lots of lots of conversations and we decided to go into regenerative farming. That created a partnership between us. And since then we've gone down that path of trying to look how do we do regenerative farming and make the place more profitable. Since we started that exercise, we've done a lot of uh, multi-species planning of our paddocks. Uh, when I bought this property, all this ridge area was covered in bloody grass. Um, we've slashed it and burned it and then planted multi-species pastures here. And the really significant part about this is the natives are coming back. We went from seven to 18 paddocks and then as a stage two we went to uh, 25. So we've gone from four to seven day rotation down to two to four day rotation. So that entailed us lots of fencing, lots of the paddocks wouldn't have had water, so we had to put a water system in. We've got a fairly large dam out the, out the back. Um, we pump from them onto a ridge, a 22,000 litre tank up there, and we've run two inch line from up there, two and a half kilometres down to the bottom end of the, the property. And off that, we've set up a trough system in most of the paddocks that don't have big dams. So I think at the moment we've got 12 different paddocks with troughs in them. Of those 25, the others have got big dams. One of the other projects that we've also been uh, some funding out of is there's about 1.6 kilometres of a gully line uh, down there. It goes right up to over there where we've planted 3,000 trees. That'll help do some shading. Um, and also stop a lot of that, there was a lot of erosion in that gully. And that also in, improves the divide biodiversity around the farm. When we first started this project, we applied for a grant for the watering system and some of the paddock fencing, which comes under that uh, Fall Valley program. So John, what are the key changes you've noticed on your property as a result of these projects? To me, it's the diversity of, of ground cover, the diversity of species. And that's been driven by two things. One is we've planted a lot of multi-species pastures. So we've planted about yeah, a bit over 25 hectares of multi-species pasture. The other thing that's creating the diversity is the, the rest the paddocks are getting, which is up to 60 days, um, is allowing a lot more of the, uh, the, the grasses there to seed. One of the big things I noticed before the pro project started, the sl this property was becoming nearly all cooch. Um, it's, so small areas of cooch were becoming large areas of cooch very quickly. A lot of the past bailums and other grasses were disappearing. That to me just says my production levels are going down and down. What we've seen since we've been able to do the set stocking, uh, go away from set stocking onto mo moving cattle daily, is more and more the native pasture and past bailums and rye grasses are coming through, clovers are coming through. Uh, the cattle are looking better. We haven't increased the numbers. We've probably, if anything, decreased the numbers, um, mainly because we, we, before we started this exercise, we were doing a, a lot of fertilising, um, planting winter, winter feed and fertilising it quite heavily. Um, we've stopped doing that fertilising. 
Uh, therefore, the amount of cattle I can run and is, is down. But when you look at the cost balance, I think our profitability's gone up. The clear thing I've learned out of this whole exercise is it's not one thing fixes all. It's, it's very much a combination of how do you rotating by using rotational grazing, intensify your, your eating of your plants and then allowing long rest times. That also builds up um, by having multi-species there that encourages soil biology. Um, by, also, it encourages how much carbon goes into your soil and, the, and that all combination gives you ultimately better production rates and better, better soil management, better um, farm management. I suppose the other thing is we're trying to diversify. Um, so where it was just beef, we've now got, as I said, we're running Aussie white sheep and some, and some pasture-fed chickens. We're selling our, our sheep direct to customers and that's improving our profitability. The sheep also run after the cattle. They're cleaning up the paddocks. They, uh, they eat the fireweed and, uh, and some of the other non-essential weeds. The chickens, we move them daily. We get the eggs, we get the manure from the chickens as well. So it also helps the paddocks. So you've hosted a field day here, John. What was that all about? And was that an experience you enjoyed? One of the things I get out of, out of doing this is I've been on a huge learning curve over the last five years. Um, I come from a scientific background. I want to be able to demonstrate and show experimentally what, that we're, the things that we're doing are our advantage. And I like sharing that. I, I think one of the best ways in which to improve Australian agriculture is run experiments, do things, and then make sure that we share that knowledge. Um, the other thing I got out, get out of those field days and the people that come is we get a whole heap of feedback about the th things we're doing and, and suggestions of how we can do that better. And that sharing is, is I think, is just fantastic. To me, the, the interaction and the community and growing that community has been a, is a huge thing that we need to do um, to improve where, where farming stands in, in Australia.